How's it going? I'm Luxy, and today's episode of Force of Nature is gonna be a little bit different from the regular ones that I have. Today is gonna be just tips and tricks on Force of Nature that I picked up, and I want to share it with you guys because these are excellent. All right, guys. So if you're in the game and you just started out, you have nothing on you, and you don't know what to do, just know that if you press M, you can. Take out the map and you can see where you are and there are lots of places So what you can do is just click and drag and you can see your surroundings of where you're supposed to go or where you want to go The map is a very useful tool for you to get around in case you get lost So always keep that in mind as you can see on the bottom left There are numbers 1 to 8 you can actually assign your equipment to these numbers All you have to do is go to your equipment tab by pressing I to do this all you have to do is is click on any kind of equipment you have I'm gonna use the stone pick here as an example so all you have to do is just click and click on wherever you want it to have fast access from now whenever you need to use the stone pick all you have to do is press 1 and you equip the stone pick so there you go this allows for faster access to your equipment without changing it in your inventory every single time food can also be placed on your fast access bar so that you can eat them without any difficulty. All right guys, if it is dark at night, what you wanna do is go to decorations and build yourself torches. Torches are really, really important as they light up the night. It takes a while for it to get constructed, but once it's up, it actually provides a decent amount of light so that you guys can see. When you guys have access to portable lamps, do use them instead of torches because Torches do get attacked by goblins as you guys can see the goblin is attacking the torch right now But they cannot attack the portable lamps both of them provide an equally good amount of light, but Portable lamps are so much better because goblins don't attack them and that is pretty awesome in this game There are three different kind of souls. There is the clay the sand and the soil So in case you're wondering how they look like the clay is orange in color, the sand is white in color, and the soil is brown in color. All you have to do is take out a digging stick or a shovel, go right on top of them, and just hold the left mouse button. And the soil will start popping out. So all you have to do is just press the left control button again, and you'll pick it all up. Let's say you're in an area that doesn't have clay around, but you have 20 clay in your inventory. So if you want to continue getting clay in this new area, all you need is 20 clay, go to the decorations tab, Scroll down and find clay, it requires 20, select it and place it anywhere around. So I'm going to place it right over here. And as you can see, it changes the ground into clay and right now, just take out the shovel and you can start digging clay out of this place. It is infinite, so you can start digging as much clay as you like. And this works for both soil and as well as the sand. So usually keep about 20 in your inventory and just go anywhere you want and you won't have to worry about the soil anymore. Let's say you have a bunch of wheat growing. There is a quicker way to gather all of them at once. All you have to do is go to your inventory tab. Right at the bottom, there's three different buttons over here. There's harvest all. The third button is called harvest all. And all you have to do is click on this. Make sure you're near all the wheat and just click on that. And it will harvest everything around you. So once you're done with that, you don't have to click one by one. You have to just, you can click here, which take all around and it would immediately take everything around you, which is amazing. The shortcut button for take all around is the left control key on your keyboard. But there is currently no shortcut key for harvest all around. It can only be found in the inventory tab. If you guys haven't catch any animals yet and you want to catch them, all you have to do is equip yourself a trap. And this green color line with a symbol right on top of the screen will appear. This is actually the range of your trap. and it shows you where the trap is going. So you gotta follow the green line. It doesn't have to be like this. You just have to follow the green line. It goes in a straight line. And all you have to do is make sure that you have two in succession. Any animals will be caught if you throw two traps at them. Any animals and two traps, okay? Always remember this. And if you want to be successful in your first throw, try and go as near as possible. Make sure the ground is level and wait for it to stop. I'm going to aim at this chicken right now. And once he stop, go ahead, click, and it will start running away. And make sure to align it again. And there you go. Press the space bar and click tame. And there you go. The chicken is yours. 
Just so you know, the trap is not forever and the animal will break free from the trap unless you tame it fast. So make sure you run all the way to it and you tame it before it breaks away. So now you have your animal and what you're gonna do, you want it to follow you, right? So go ahead, press spacebar, click on the chicken and click on follow me tab. So the chicken will now follow you as an ally and you can bring it all the way back home. So right now I'm gonna bring the chicken right in here and join up with the rest of the other chickens and I'm gonna close the gate and remember to click the chicken and click wait here so once you've done that it will start roaming around and basically that's about it you can do this for any other animals like the cows sheep, as well as the goats and the pigs the pig does nothing right now it does not have a feeding option and i do not know why so it's generally useless when you kill your first goblin, they usually drop either copper coins or gold coins. Do keep these coins because they are very important. What they do is they can be smelted at the blast furnace into copper ingots as well as gold ingots. Gold coins especially because there's no way to get gold ore and the only way to get gold ingots is by gold coins. So make sure to keep all your gold and copper coins because they are useful in the future. Do not waste your time chopping this huge tree down because I am right now currently using the highest tier axe which is the steel axe and it has no effect on this tree so I don't know why this is happening but don't waste your time on this tree. Alright guys there are two melee weapons that you guys can use. One is the sword and one is a mace. So there is a difference between the two of them. The mace always has a higher damage compared to the long sword. But its downfall is that you can't move when you're attacking. So I'm going to show you guys right now how this works. Okay, so right now I'm going to show you guys the mace. As you can see, once I attack, I can't move. My character just stays still. But the damage is quite high. But if I were to use the sword, I can attack and move back while I'm attacking. In my opinion, I feel that the sword would be better because it gives you a chance to dodge any incoming damage to it to you. And that would be a pretty good choice comparing the two weapons. Because if you were to just stand there fighting like several enemies at one time and you can't move, you're gonna take a lot of damage and that would be very bad for you. Once you manage to get yourself a bow and you equipped it, it has the same symbol as a trap. So as you guys can see, the green line appears again. There is left click and right click. There's two kinds of damage that the bow does. A left click and a right click. So left click looks like this and it's a lot faster and right click looks like this. It has a slow animation but it deals a lot more damage compared to the left click. So always use the right click whenever you are using your bow. So I'm going to show you guys how to use a bow. A trick that I picked up. And this allows you to use the right click more efficiently. As soon as the arrow releases, change to your sword and change back to your bow. And that gives you a cancel animation technique where, which is really really awesome. And it deals tons and tons of damage. So let me just show you over here. So okay, I just one shot at him. Alright, we gotta find something a bit stronger here. So this is a real dangerous copy and if you guys haven't seen before, it's very fast. So what you learned here previously is you're gonna right click, it takes a little practice, release, change, right click and release. So there you go, it takes him down really really fast and you can do this with any enemies, it takes a bit of practice. Once you master this technique, it's gonna be really awesome. As soon as your base, any of your base gets attacked, there will be a construction is under attack sign that pops up. So this is really awesome because what you can do is you can go over there and just remove them from your premises by killing them or whatnot. In Force of Nature, there are different biomes in the game. As you guys can see, this is a desert area and I'm currently wearing desert clothing right now. If I were to just remove that, there would be an icon coming out on the bottom left and it says plus 38 degrees Celsius and my stamina starts decreasing. So make sure you have the proper equipment before proceeding on to these dangerous biomes. There is not just desert biome, there is also a cold biome and that is over here. I'm going to show you guys right now. If you were to go into a colder biome, it would be over here. It would say plus 3 degrees Celsius and, and as you guys can see, it decreases health instead of stamina. So. Make sure you're properly equipped before 
you are going to these different biomes as they might hurt you a lot. There are two kinds of equipment that are specifically made for these kinds of biomes. Make sure you get them and then proceed on to these biomes to get your shard. Let's say you want to find yourself a shard. You open up your map and you can't seem to find a shard anywhere, right? So make sure you have a compass with you. You can go ahead and craft a compass by going to your crafting table that you built scrolling down and you can find yourself a compass this item will not be lost at death so you can die as many times as you want the compass will still stay with you i have my compass over here i'm just gonna pick it up right now and as you guys can see it's over here put it in the inventory and a tab at the bottom left appears it shows a compass and it shows a black arrow follow the black arrow towards your shard once you open up once you have this compass equipped open up your map it now shows an arrow pointing towards your shard which is like a gem as you guys can see on the map it's right over here and it shows where my shard is once you've gotten a pretty decent base you can start building yourself portals portals are basically places that you can teleport yourself to and th they have this kind of parameter around them look at this purple color parameter this is the parameter of a portal any other portal that are built cannot be inside this parameter. So this is why, as you guys can see, there is another portal here named Perseus. And there's one more over here named Jupiter. There is no way that you can build another portal inside this parameter of another portal. So once you have the portal built, all you have to do is go click on a portal. Click on the portal that you want to teleport to and you will teleport to there, no problems. Alright guys, so that's basically most of the tips that I have for you guys. So if you have any questions at all, do leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them as much as I can. If you want to see more of them, do leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Luxy salute to all you guys and I'll see you guys again soon.